Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Elvin from Dr. Wealth. And today I want to share with you about the top e-commerce stocks around the world. How this idea came about was due to the recent listing of Coupang, which is the leader e-commerce company in South Korea. So I thought that there were many, many e-commerce stocks nowadays that we can choose from. And uh, it would be good to know that, you know, who are the leaders uh, in each country or even the region. And so that we can identify a uh, market leader for us to make our choice of uh, investing in e-commerce stocks a lot easier. All right. A usual disclaimer, pause and read if you need to. Okay, let's begin. And um, there are actually a very wide definitions when it comes to e-commerce. Okay, um, I, I want to narrow it down and that's why I want to uh, explain in this uh, few points uh, what I would consider a legit e-commerce company. Okay, first of all, it should sell a large variety of items, right? Uh, it's not just very specific to, let's say, fashion, just shoes, etc. It should uh, be broadened across like to even electronics, home appliances, groceries, uh, and whatnot. Okay, so uh, to me, that is a more complete uh, 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 marketplace for e-commerce, right? Uh, although the the kind of a very narrow niche kind of um, uh, online selling can also be considered e-commerce, but I will not um, um, put them in this presentation, right, or in this consideration. And second, it can be in all modes of business model, it can be business to business, it can be business to consumer, it can be even the consumer to consumer, right? Uh, really a marketplace where uh, anyone can set up a shop and sell uh, goods to another customer that is going on board, right? So the e-commerce become more like a platform, a marketplace platform, okay? Um, and it could also be like B2B, like Alibaba has the uh, very strong B2B segment, Okay, or it can be like uh, Taobao, which is also from Alibaba, uh, that serves the B2C, or even Amazon, which is also more B2C. Okay, so it depends uh, on whichever model. I, I, I'm less um, um, picky about that. I think all models can work. Uh, third is that uh, it has to be having a leading market share, either locally, um, within the country, or regionally. Let's say Europe, uh, South America, or even North America. Right. Uh, why is this important? Because I think it is a winner state all market. And um, uh, if let's say you have captured a significant lead in terms of the market share, then um, your your economies of scale, uh, your uh, your route to profitability will always also be a higher chance. Okay. So that's why I limit to the market leaders as much as possible. Okay. And uh, fourth is that they may have other businesses other than e-commerce uh, because uh, today it's very difficult to. Uh, find a big business that only do one thing okay um, usually they broaden out to other segments um, that are probably complementary to the e-commerce core business that they have all right and that includes like amazon which have um, the aws amazon web services right the cloud business rather than just the e-commerce which actually drive a lot of profitability for amazon okay so i'll still consider that as an e-commerce company in that case and lastly it has to be public listed or a subsidiary of a listed company, all right? Uh, why is this important? It's because uh, we, are, we are retail investors, right? So um, if we want to uh, analyze a company, it's not for the fun of it, but at the end of the day, we want to put our money to work. So public listed company enables us uh, to, to um, invest in our ideas or research, and uh, at least there's some utility out of it, okay? So these are my definition, and we'll look at some of these companies um, in the next few slides, right? I put out the map and uh, these were the leaders of the uh, markets that they dominate, right, geographically, okay. North America, of course, we have our Amazon, all right, uh, very strong over there. It originated there as well. Uh, Amazon have presence in other regions as well, which I will share with you in another slide, okay. Uh, in South America is Mercado Liber, okay, uh, it's the market leader there. In Africa, there's Jumia, and in India is Flipkart. Okay, uh, on this note, Fleet Card is not listed. Uh, it is a subsidiary of Walmart, right? So Walmart is listed. So um, you still can participate if you like the Flip Card story, um, a super big population in India, and uh, you know you still can indirectly invest in it via uh, Walmart, right? Southeast Asia would be SEA, C, okay, with Shopee. Um, they just edge over uh, Lazada in the Southeast Asia market, which I'll share with you later as well. Uh, Alibaba is still the number one in China, uh, Kupang in South Korea, and Rakuten in Japan. 
right? And just take note that in certain uh, region or certain countries, the market leadership is uh, just a slight um, a win over the next competitor. Okay, uh, some are, are differentiated by a clearer uh, lead, right? But not all are a uh, uh, very clear cut kind of market dominating kind of position. All right, so I'll go through in more detail for each of this. Okay, so the top five countries e commerce adoption. Uh, why is this important? Because um, certain countries have a different kind of uh, adoption rate when it comes to e commerce. Some uh, people just don't have the culture, or some countries just lack that culture or the trust um, to buy things online. Uh, or it could be because the physical shops are a lot more convenient and uh, easy for people to just uh, get their own stuff. Right, um, and as of uh, February twenty one nine, the top five countries that have the highest e commerce sales uh, in the retail segment is your China, right, and US in second, UK, Japan, and South Korea. Okay, why are this important? Because it will translate um, to bigger e commerce companies operating in this region, or uh, like countries such as China would probably be able to accommodate more e-commerce players because the market um, is bigger and uh, the customers are primed to use e-commerce. Uh, that's why you see a lot of Chinese e-commerce sites besides just Alibaba, you have JD, you have Pinduoduo, uh, you have Meituan and, and, and VIP shop and even more, right? They are not in this uh, uh, top few players, okay? So this, this is the, these are the top five countries, all right? Later we'll, we'll see um, how it translates to the revenue of these companies operating in these regions, okay? So Amazon by far is the largest e-commerce by revenue, okay? And also by the geographical reach. Um, North America, it has a 37.9% market share. Okay, uh, the next biggest um, market share will be in Japan, all right? And then Europe is about 9.8%. Uh, Europe is known to be a very fragmented market. There are many, many players as well, but each taking a very small slice of the entire e-commerce market. So uh, Amazon is considered one of the leaders in Europe as well, okay? And the rest of the countries, um, uh, Amazon has a 9.2% market share. Right, so it's pretty formidable, and they are still trying to win more market share all around the world. Okay, except China probably. Right, uh, Alibaba uh, actually has a biggest uh, uh, gross merchandise value. Right, that means um, it's not the revenue that is being re is received by Alibaba. It's actually the number of uh, the amount of um, uh, sales that has been transacted on its platform. Okay, so it could be like uh, uh, on the top of platform, right, where where um, is the cust uh, is the is the is the sellers that sell all these items, right? Third party seller rather than Alibaba that's selling all these items directly. So um, then they will still consider as a sales uh, on this platform, right? But Alibaba don't take all the revenue. Okay, so that is the difference, right? On this note, in terms of GMV, Alibaba GMV is actually larger than that of um, uh, Amazon, right? Amazon does most of the selling. Uh, there are some third party sellers, but not. The overwhelming revenue that's been um, uh, contributing on the platform itself, right? So Alibaba has a lot more uh, GMB um, transactions there, right? Okay? Even in China itself, um, it is dominating the second place JD.com uh, is very far, right? And Pintoto on number three is also quite far from uh, Alibaba's position at this point in time. And in Japan, it's between Rakuten and Amazon Japan. Okay, Rakuten has a 26.8% share, but this uh, the latest data that I could get was 21.8. Okay, um, and you can see that the Amazon slice is not small. Okay, and based on the previous slide that we see that uh, it actually has a 22.9% share in Japan. So it's a pretty close tie uh, uh, race in Japan between the top two players. Okay, but uh, we can say that Rakuten, uh, based on what we know right now, is still the market leader in Japan. And Kupang is number one in South Korea, and the recent IPO uh, was uh, uh, success is popped on the first day, right? The share price went up pretty much uh, away from the uh, IPO price. And uh, it used to be G Market that was number one. Okay, it used to be G, G Market number one in, in South Korea, but in uh, 2020, Kupang just uh, flew past that number <laughs> convincingly and now is the market leader in South Korea, right? Just in time and uh, um, for the IPO, okay? This is a very um, good growth and you can see the rest of the competitors, their market share actually sh uh, shrunk, more or less shrunk, okay? So this is a very good sign that Kupang is doing something right in South Korea. 
uh, Mercado Liber is dominating in the Latin America, all right? Uh, he has a uh, uh, market share, leading market share in many, many countries. Okay, the number one would be Brazil, all right? It's number, um, it's, it's beating the, the others like Americanas, OLX, Amazon Brazil, all right? It has a uh, 2.9 uh, billion, okay? Market access compared to the rest. And in uh, Argentina is also the leader, okay? In Chile is the leader, in Mexico it is the leader, and Colombia, okay? So in uh, five out of, uh, I don't know how many countries in South America, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, but these are very populous countries, okay? Uh, and the more uh, well-to-do compared to the other South American uh, countries, okay? And they managed to, con um, managed to conquer the first uh, spot in these uh, big markets. So I would think that this Mercado, Mercado Liber uh, is undisputedly the South America um, e-commerce leader. All right. So this image was taken from uh, this SeekingAlpha.com, uh, this writer Trevor Jen Wine. Okay, so this was a very clear depiction and I like it a lot. So thanks to him. And in Southeast Asia, we have uh, Shopee, uh, which belongs to SEA. Okay, the e-commerce arm of SEA. All right, and uh, this is more of a uh, web traffic. Okay, or the or the shoppers traffic. Right, online. While uh, Lazada used to be the number one, okay, this is based on twenty one nine, right? Um, the this this turquoise line, okay, so it already surpassed Lazada in twenty one nine Q one, uh, for for Shopee's uh, combined traffic, okay, whether it's on the app or is it on the the web traffic, okay, and uh, it is the one that is capturing market share from the rest of the competitors in Southeast Asia, right? Whether is it Lazada, Tokopedia, uh, Bukalapa from uh, Indonesia and Tiki. Okay, so um, this is a good sign, right? That Shopee is also um, uh, winning in the Southeast Asian market, and they should be able to widen the gap uh, as long as they continue to push a lot more advertising. As you can see, the jingles on YouTube. Okay, uh, and I must admit, sometimes it gets a bit irritating, right? And uh, Jumia is taking on Africa. Okay, um, they. They, but the only thing is that um, their e-commerce penetration in Africa is not huge. Okay, I think that this is a market issue because Africans, uh, relative to the rest of the world, they are less. Uh, they have less purchasing power. All right, and I I think it is a harder market to penetrate. Okay, but that said, it also means that if Jumia, Jumia is able to capture the market earlier than the rest, it it can become a very huge moat um, to prevent competitors from coming in. Whereas for the richer countries, uh, where they have more spending power, um, that's easier to accommodate more competitors. Right, so Jumia might be right on that spot, and they are also expanding to other businesses such as uh, I think a lot more into the fintech and payment um, area, right? Which also uh, solve a lot of the the um, uh, liquidity uh, issues in in Africa, right? Having to have physical currencies that's being passed to them or distributed around a uh, very fragmented, uh, separated kind of um, uh, distributed populations, okay? So I do think that that may be, you know, uh, something right going on, okay? Using the e-commerce platform to move into fintech. This is nothing new because Alibaba has also done it via uh, N Financial and it's very, very successful, right? The e-commerce actually help uh, customers adopt the fintech solutions a lot easier. Okay, so I do think that that is similar to what uh, Jumia is doing, and I think Mercado Liber as well, right? Especially in these kind of emerging countries, uh, fintech becomes a, a very good solution for the unbanked, all right? So that goes beyond just e-commerce. Uh, Flipkart is the number one in India, okay, with a 32% market share, and Amazon India is very close behind with 31%, and take note, this is 21.8 uh, from the Forrester um, uh, research, right? I haven't seen the updated version uh, as of now, okay, but the numbers could change, all right? Um, but this also shows to you that Amazon actually is quite strong in many areas, okay? <laughs> in many regions besides just North America. Uh, if they are not number one, they are actually a close second, such as uh, in India, uh, as well as in Japan, right? These are very huge market as well, okay? So in comparison, I put out this, uh, I tabulated the, the, uh, these companies, right? I didn't put in Flipkart because it's a private company, I, uh, but I didn't put in Walmart as well, okay? Because Walmart, most of the business actually is from North America, right? Uh, the retail side, uh, the physical retail, which is not really the e-commerce, okay? So that is the clarification I want to make. And uh, I, I rank them uh, by revenue from the highest to the lowest, left to right okay so on the left you have the highest revenue that is amazon 
okay and uh, with a 386 billion dollars right they have domination in uh, North America and uh, Japan is the clear number two right and uh, growing uh, maybe maybe the latest number right with my surprise they may become number one already um, it's growing at 38 percent per year okay and Alibaba is number two with uh, about 72 billion dollars in revenue Okay, um, their domination in China and I'll put as, uh, Southeast Asia here because Lazada is their subsidiary. Okay, uh, it is a very close number two to Shopee. All right, uh, revenue growth of about 35%. And Rakuten is with uh, $13 billion. Okay, um, the number one in Japan, uh, growing at 15%, which is uh, slower compared to the top two. Right, Kupang in South Korea has a 12 billion revenue and is growing very fast at 91%. We saw it overtake um, the second place G market um, uh, last year, right? With a very huge revenue gain and uh, capturing the market share at a very fast speed. Um, this is Mercado Liber, uh, the king in Latin America, with a close to 4 billion revenue, growing at 73% um, from the last year, right? And uh, C, as a two billion dollars with a two hundred sixty three percent growth. Okay, is even much faster. I think their their ad spending has worked tremendously. Uh, that propelled them to the number one spot in Southeast Asia. All right, e commerce and Jumia with just a mere one hundred sixty seven million. As I mentioned, because the purchasing power in in Africa isn't that large, I don't think it's surprising to see a much lower revenue compared to the more developed countries that the competitors are operating in. All right. Um, in fact, it saw a decline. Okay, while the rest of the the e-commerce leaders um, actually uh, saw witness a revenue gain, Jumia actually saw a revenue loss. Okay, and I suspect it could be because of the COVID nineteen that happened in year twenty twenty. Right, um, it impacted maybe Africa a lot more. Okay, they are <coughs> sorry. Excuse me. They are, they are a lot more uh, sensitive to this kind of shocks okay, as compared to the richer countries where um, you know you have more disposable income to play around even when times are not good. Okay, so I think this might be just a temporary thing. Okay, I also put out the uh, price to sales ratio because not all of them are profitable. So I can't use a P ratio. I just com uh, use a price to sales ratio for all of them for the same comparison. Okay, um, you can see that they are they are quite a wide range, as low as P S one to as high as P S twenty nine. Okay, um, um, I I would say that it has something to do with the growth rate as well. You can see some correlations over there. Uh, when the the growth are higher the they are trading on a much higher multiples okay of course Jumia is a, a an exception right but I think it's just a, a investor also probably see that is a is a one off year and they see more uh, potential in the future projection of growth for Jumia okay so I would say Mercado Liber and C um, are higher price right their multiples are higher because their growth rate are also higher uh, that makes Kupang um, um, doesn't look that expensive right compared to the rest okay growing at that uh, fast speed okay and of course whether they can sustain this growth rate is another question okay uh, otherwise in terms of the big tech the big two all right uh, is at uh, ranging from four to seven okay so um, it is it is a very different kind of a uh, very wide range of uh, price multiples even though they are e-commerce and e-commerce leaders in their own right in their own region in their own countries okay uh, so uh, relatively i would say that um, it, it seems like kupang is not that expensive even since the ipo itself right i think the share price will come down to near the ipo price okay due to the recent uh, uh, tech stock sell down okay I, i'm also quite surprised about alibaba um, despite a much depressed share price, the PS ratio doesn't suggest it to be very cheap. Okay, in fact, Amazon is lower than that. All right, so that's something uh, interesting. And of course, the cheapest would be Rakuten. Okay, uh, if if you are keen, uh, but of course you have to take note that the growth rate is a lot lower, right? And Amazon is chasing its tail over there. Okay, if Amazon managed to take over it, then I would think that maybe Amazon will be a better bet than just going for Rakuten. All right, so I hope that that gives you some sense. Okay, that's uh, on the pricing range that uh, for all these uh, e-commerce leaders. And in summary, um, just some takeaway, right? Key takeaway: uh, Amazon and Alibaba dwarf the rest, right? If you take a look at their revenue, okay, they definitely dwarf the rest of the e-commerce. Um, this is largely because uh, China, as we mentioned just now, is a very huge 
uh, e-commerce market, the huge, uh, largest e-commerce market in the world. Okay, and it's not surprising that the market leader uh, actually has very huge revenue, right? And Amazon, okay, has many many uh, uh, e-commerce penetration in multiple markets. Okay, not just in North America, in Europe, in Japan, in India. All these are very huge market too. All right, so uh, it's also naturally that they have a much larger revenue than the rest. Okay, while um, the emerging markets like Jumia, South, uh, the C as well as Mercado, Liber, uh, these are emerging or even frontier markets. Um, their purchasing power may not be the same as the developed countries, so their revenue is a lot lower. All right, so um, the, if you want to go for really the top two, then Amazon and Alibaba won't be wrong. Okay, and they also have more business segments, right? Not just uh, the e-commerce side, they have the uh, cloud business, both Amazon and Alibaba also have, and you have a lot of investments as well, right? Uh, see, Mercado, Liber, and Kupang uh, grew faster, okay, compared to the rest, okay? The question is, can they continue to do so, all right? Um, I would think that C and Mercado, Liber has a higher potential because of a large total addressable market, whereas if Kupang just stays in South Korea, um, business will be more stable, right? But the growth prospect may slow down at some point in time, okay? So these are the seven national regional commerce leaders, right? Have uh, already emerged. And you know, you can just um, take a portfolio approach, right? Buy all the leaders um, in all these respective regions, and then you just form them into a global e-commerce fund, a personal e-commerce fund, right? So I thought that that is a very interesting idea. Uh, if you are keen, you can definitely take a look at, at what I've presented to you, these seven co uh, companies um, in the e-commerce space. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope that it has been useful for you. All the best.